Sign up for prize picks using code NBA Goober for 100% deposit match up to $100. Link is in the description. Sup, dude. JR Smith, aka JR Swish, aka Henny God, was a role player with superstar talent. The dude could shoot the shit out the ball as well as throw down like a freak of nature. He's also probably the best bad shot taker in league history. He took shots that had everyone screaming, what the fuck, but when those shots dropped, Jaws would be on the floor. His highlights make him look like he's one of the greatest players to ever touch a basketball. There aren't many role players who can put dudes on a poster as well as hit on the move 35 foot contested bombs. That's just what made JR special. He was one of the most exciting role players the league had ever seen. Getting drafted straight out of high school, the dude had high expectations and was expected to become a star. His athleticism and skill were too crazy to not think this, but as we all know, he never became a star. The reason for this is simply because JR Smith's a goob, a complete and total goober. What I mean by that is he didn't necessarily have the drive or IQ to become anything more than a role player. There are many examples of this, the most famous being the time he dribbled out the clock in game one of the 2018 finals. George Hill missed the free throw, JR grabs the board, but instead of taking a shot, he sprints full speed in the opposite direction of the basket. It was one of the biggest oopsie daisies of all time. Another example would be his work ethic during his first two seasons. In his rookie year with New Orleans, he was a starter for a majority of the season, putting up 10 points per game in about 25 minutes of action each night. Then in his sophomore year, he began the season as the starting shooting guard, but by the end, he was completely out of the rotation. His coach, Byron Scott, said this was due to JR's poor work ethic. One thing you have to keep in mind after hearing that is he was only two years removed from high school with millions of dollars in the bank. I know I'd be fucking around if I had millions right now, but then again, he was a professional and was expected to act like one. So the Hornets traded him to Chicago, then Chicago immediately traded him to the Nuggets. With the Nuggets, I'd assume his work ethic they got better because he became a very important piece of their rotation. According to JR, coach George Carl told him his role was to just go out there and get as many buckets as possible. And oh boy did he. JR had four 40 point games with Denver and all of them were insane. The craziest one would have to be the game where he scored his career high 45 points in under 30 minutes. In that game, he was scorching hot going 13 for 22 from the field, but the crazy part is 11 out of those 13 makes were all from three point land. He shot 11 for 18 from three. What's even crazier is 23 of his 45 points came in the fourth quarter. The dude put the team on his back and led him to victory. The insanity of J.R. Smith was on full display. When the dude got hot, he was hot. After playing five seasons with Denver averaging 14 points per game off the bench, his time there came to an end. But he didn't go to a different NBA team. You see, in 2011, the NBA had a shortened season due to the lockout. If you don't know what a lockout is, it's basically the players, coaches, and other team staff giving each other the silent treatment while money gets figured out. During the lockout, some players decided to go play in other leagues to stay fresh and pass time. JR was one of those people and decided he wanted to go play in China. He signed a one-year $3 million deal with the Golden Bulls and went absolutely batshit crazy. In 32 games, the dude averaged 34 points, seven rebounds, four assists, and two and a half steals per game. He had four games where he scored over 50 points and one game where he put up 60. He turned into Kobe Bryant over there. He was also kind of a dickhead though. One weekend, he kept ordering food in his room, racking up a room service bill of around $3,000 that his team had to pay for. He didn't actually eat any of the food. He just wanted to see if they would keep bringing it. Woj described JR's time in China as a relentless pattern of insubordination, basically meaning he was a complete douchebag. He returned to the NBA in February of 2012, signing with the Knicks, but he kind of sucked, averaging an inefficient 12 points. He sucked even more in the playoffs, shooting just 18% from three and 31% from the field. However, the following season, he turned up, winning six man of the year, putting up a career high of 18 points per game, but then he sucked again in the playoffs. That's just who JR was. He didn't show up every night, but when he did show up, it was a sight to see. Halfway through his fourth season with the Knicks, JR got traded to the Cavs, which is probably the best thing that ever happened to him. He teamed up with fellow goober LeBron James and was headed towards his first ring. With the Cavs, JR had his best playoff game ever. How could I forget? It was against the Hawks in game one of the 2015 Eastern Conference Finals. It was one of the most beautiful displays of bad shot taking I'd ever seen. He scored 28 points with eight three-pointers, and I'm pretty sure all of them were heavily contested.
contested. At one point, he fucking waited for Millsap to contest his shot and he drilled it in his mouth. It was absolutely insane. He cooked us. The following year in 2016, he won his first ring after the Cavs, aka LeBron, overcame a 3 1 deficit. JR played his role of gunslinger quite well, shooting 43% from three over the course of the playoffs. He decided to celebrate winning the championship by refusing to put on a shirt for weeks. Seriously, he was shirtless for a very long time. After that ring, he began nearing the end of his career. His production dropped off and the Cavs got their salad tossed twice by the Warriors in 2017 and 2018. He ended up getting another ring in 2020, but didn't really play a lot, so do with that information what you will. Over the course of his career, JR was one of the most exciting dudes to watch because of his insane shot selection and his ability to make those insane shots. He was quite the character too, creating many memorable memes. Last week I made a video on Sean Livingston, but it got age restricted, so if you're 18 plus click right there to watch it and if you're not click right there to watch the video i made on reggie miller hope you enjoyed this one thanks for watching bye dude